John Scully. And we all remember John did a lot of commentary in his past life, and now he's training fighters. John, has anything solid popped up for a commentary for you right now? And I know you have done a lot of training of boxers and even got a world champion. Right. Well, uh, I've been waiting to get a call, but, you know, I think that the broadcast game is, is a very political game, and you have to... You have to be associated with the right people, and uh, you know. So so far, I'm, you know, if people want to see me do broadcasting, I'm, I've done a lot of ESPN Classic fights. So if you go to ESPN Classic, you can watch the Mancini and Camacho and those fights. Yeah. John's very knowledgeable of the fight game because John was a fighter. He fought Michael Nunn. He fought Henry Marcy over in Germany. So he's very knowledgeable of the fight game, but now he's in his second life. He's training fighters, and he also has a world champion. Can you tell us a little bit about the champion you're uh, training? Well, I'm the assistant trainer for Arthur Bedabayev, who's the WBC, IBF, and WBO light heavyweight champion, uh, vicious puncher, you know, brutal finisher, uh, just an amazing fighter, like mentally, physically, psychologically, he's an amazing fighter. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get the fight with Bavol relatively soon. He's fighting Callum Smith in uh, Quebec City, Canada, on uh, the beginning of January. So we're, I'm getting ready to go to training camp for that. It must be really en enjoyable and really uplifting to be with a unified champion like that and a champion of his caliber. I mean, it makes you want to wake up in the morning. Right. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a pleasure to work with because he's a guy you don't have to tell him, you know, you have to get your rest and you have to eat right. Like, he, he, he's a true professional. He handles all of that. Uh, there's no babysitting required whatsoever. So he's an amazing fighter. And I always tell people to illustrate what type of man he is. When he fought Joe Smith and beat Joe Smith for the unified title uh, in, on a Saturday, he went home to Canada on Sunday and Monday morning and I have video of this Monday morning at 7 o'clock he was in the gym pounding a tire with sledgehammers at 7 o'clock less wow. than 48 hours after the fight so well I, I can kind of understand that because I used to talk to Bernard Hopkins because right. Bernard Hopkins was in Philadelphia right. Bernard is similar. and Bernard is similar like that right after a fight he takes only 7 days off and he's right back in the gym right. and he asked me he says what is your job I said I'm a meat cutter he says, well, my job is boxing, so I don't take long layoffs. I fight. So right after a fight, I go right back into training. So I understand what you mean. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, like I say, he went home and went to the gym the next day, and it wasn't even a thing where he was trying to, you know, show off. Right? Like, that's just his mentality. Like, like, go back to the gym. You have to be in the gym to train. He's, he's an amazing human being. I, I really, I really am a, I'm a friend and a fan of Arthur Bedabayev. Wow, that's, that's different. <laughs> I enjoyed that. What do you think about the 2023 Boxing Hall of Fame? Now, the three meccas are Vegas, New York, and Atlantic City. Atlantic City, the draw of the talent of fighters is amazing. I've been saying, and I was telling Ray in the beginning, year, several years ago, I said, this is an amazing event. You are going to, once it catches on and people start to realize what's going on here, I think it's going to turn into something humongous. People from all over the world, when they figure this out, they're going to start coming here because this is easily, uh, like, like to me, I love Canastota, the whole nine, but if I had a choice, honestly, I would come here. Well, the, the thing is, it's a lot smaller. We do get other celebrities that come here, other who are not in boxing. Like, we get a couple of rappers, right. you know, we, we get uh, TV celebrities. And like I said, I, I'm from the Philadelphia area, so I know a lot of the boxers. Right. And you get that hometown feeling. Right, no, it's, it's, it's the type of thing where, to me, this, this event, every year, I, what I notice about it is, it's, it's very uh, ingratiating. Like, you can walk in, like my friend, I called my friend, he was in the casino, I said, listen man, come here, you know, Roxanne is here. You know, come, you can, you can walk right up to her and talk to her. And he walks in and just walks right up to her and he's talking to her like, like they're best friends. I mean, it's just, you don't see that in, in other places. A lot of fighters, the Body celebrities are, right. are secluded and they're behind a barrier. Here, you know, last year I got here, 
Roberto Duran's in the hotel room right next to me. He's in. You know, I'm in the hallway, and Roberto's walking in the room. I'm, say, I'm saying this is, you know, this is special. And we all know who Roberto Duran is. One of the probably ten greatest fighters of all time. And probably something you said last year, the best living legend alive right now. Right, right. You'd have to. I mean, look. If he's not, I mean. Sugar Ray Leonard, him, you know, who else? Who else is better than those two guys alive? Right. right. Well, I have to give it to Duran because Duran did beat him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, Ray beat him twice, though. <laughs> Do you have any words of encouragement for the young up-and-comers who want to take off maybe boxing or even, like, college? I want to be a doctor, want to be a lawyer, or just want to go to school. Do you have any words of encouragement for the young ones? You know, me as a boxer, I'm here... 40 years after I started. And when I started, I knew, if you asked me then as a kid, where are you going to be in 40 years? I would, I would have said, I'm going to be in this game because I love it, right? And that's part, a lot of people have jobs. They don't love the job. Right. And they're not going to stay at that job, no matter what. They're going to last a couple of years and they're going to quit. You have to find something you love to do because right. then it will never be a job. It will never be boring. You will, you like. I'll be in this till till I die, 100 percent, and because I love it. And I'm, you know, I don't know if I'm lucky or not, but that's my my motto. That's my method. John Scully, a middleweight contender, future Hall of Fame trainer. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.